Hello, everyone. I'm very happy to be here in Morin Broadbeck Studio in Geneva. Morin is a Swiss um, multisensory artist and single song writer uh, with an uh, international education. And today, I'm very happy to, to interview her. Hello, Morin. Hi. You studied screenwriting in Canada and then got a degree at the Art Center College of Design and Fine Art Photography in California. You then did postgraduate studies at the head here in Geneva. Yes. How did uh, those academic studies help you develop your art? Well, I've been always interested uh, in imagery and the relationship between imagery and time. And when I say imagery, I talk about photography, video and film and the relationship with time and also the relationship with sound and music. So I was very drawn right away to photography and to video and filmmaking. So I wanted to explore this. And so I decided to do a film school in Vancouver. So I did the Vancouver Film School and I learned there uh, about production, about movie production from conception to writing to producing and then post-production. So I was always interested in imagery and exploring this imagery more deeply and that's why I decided to study at the Art Center College of Design because I was living in Los Angeles at the time and I wanted to really get to know how to create my own image very well and create exactly what I wanted. So this degree went very deeply into the process and I started creating my art and I started to define my art with my own identity and see what came out. And it was really through experimenting with a lot of different colors and lighting techniques and really experimenting with techniques and subject and narration and editing photography that it brought me to where I am now. So it was really a build little by little. And then the, the degree at uh, the head in Geneva, it was because I was really interested in creating more immersive space with imagery, creating more interactive uh, art and interactive installation. How do you describe your work today? Oh, I approach my work in two different angles. One is the angle of the narrative and a conceptual angle onto how my work relates to what's happening uh, in our time and space right now as a society and the other one is a more aesthetic approach where I investigate photography until where I can push this photographic image and what I can actually create with it. I saw you work for the first time in your solo exhibition at the Crystal Gallery here in Geneva. I love the series of portraits called the Eraser. How do you go about creating this series? Well, I've been photographing teenagers for a very, very long time now. I would say almost 20 years. And basically what I do is I photograph teenagers and I catalog all these images. This, I do this for all of my series. I catalog my work and when I start working on it, I pick within my catalog and I don't really look at when the image was created. I uh, select images, like an editor would select images or a curator would select images. So I create my selection uh, with a narrative. What was your motivation? Well, the time, the teenagerhood or teenagehood is such an important time because this is when we detach from the identity our parents gave us and when we start to create our own identity and there's a lot of trial and error and in the same time it's a period where we built our life on it it's the it's the foundation of our life it's an explosion of emotions and colors and wonders and dreams and anger and all the emotion are mixed together in in a teenager and i think it's also the time where there are all the possibilities and when I photograph the image, the teenagers, they come in my studio or I photograph them on location and it always takes a bit of time for them to get used to the camera. Sometimes it's their parents that want to have a portrait if it's a commission work and they're not really into it. 
But then after a while, if the parents always send the parents away, they have to play a role with the parents. And when the parents are not there, they can really be themselves and explore themselves. And it takes very little time for them to really be comfortable with me in my studio and really just be who they are. And that's when everything comes together and the photograph is taken. You said uh, you have been greatly influenced by pop art. What is your relationship with color? Wow, I have a very strong relationship with color. It's true, I grew up uh, in a farmhouse um, and my dad, who's an architect, had his studio there and he was making his own artwork that was very pop art kind of artwork. And um, I was always around all these colors. Um, I guess that influenced me a lot to look at all these pop art work and have all this pop art book around me. And um, when I studied art history, I was also very attracted by all these very bright color clashing together and uh, making the world even more colorful than it is. And so as soon as I started to work with photography, I started to play with infrared film, with positive film and messing up with the chemicals and developing the chemicals. And that's where I really started my work on color. I saw one, which is the oops, uh, extra coated yes. with the orange. I yes. really love it. The uh, donut? The donut. <laughs> yeah, that is my favorite. Yeah, this one is uh, the new museum in New York. I, with this series, I photographed Landmark, I photographed the Eiffel Tower, the Arc of Triumph. I photographed, uh, you know, places where a lot of tourists go uh, because I'm, I'm interested in those places because they are symbolically what everybody goes to see, but they have a very symbolic and strong reference to the past and sometimes a past that people didn't like, but yet uh, that's what we go see now. And that's uh, very interesting to me, this relationship with the time and the past that, that, that we have. So the donut was made in New York. And then I think I created the image in New York also. I created the donut there. Uh, support artists, uh, women, it was for you an evidence as a female artist. So you create and host two podcasts. They are part of the platform Road and Radical. What do you mean by the words raw and radical? I worked very hard on explaining this word raw and radical and women and what they mean. Because I wanted uh, for women that every kind of woman feels welcome into this platform. Uh, whether they're transgendered or not, or who, whoever feels like a woman, I wanted to feel welcome. Um, in, the, in this platform. So raw, it's about being honest, being spontaneous, being uh, very authentic with who we are. Uh, it, it's about being present and aware and, and uh, having, um, and being simple. It's about just the way things are without hiding it, without twisting it, without um, trying to fit into something that we're not. This is just before, it's about honesty. This is why this podcast um, I created is so important to me because it gives a voice to women, it gives perspective to other women, women can listen to it, uh, even the women that cannot talk, that don't have a chance to express themselves, uh, potentially can listen to it. And I think we as a woman that have a chance to say what we think, say what we believe in, to open minds, open new doors, open, bring new ideas to the table, uh, we can inspire through our life experiences other women. And I think this perspective is really important. My final question is, uh, what are you project for the future? So right now I am working on a new series, actually I have two new series I'm working on and one of them is called Interplay, Enmeshment and Matter and I'm working more on the scientific point of view of energies in um, 
everything that has to do with the environment and global warming and environmental changes. And um, I am working on ways that the photograph can get out of the wall and come into the space. So I'm working also on videos and I'm working on uh, f uh, films, videos, uh, more kind of multi-video landscapes and also sound. Thank you for this great moment. <laughs> oh, you're welcome.